There's a few wild cards that come with using 3D fashion design software, but I think one of the things that people don't anticipate is how important it is to understand patterns and pattern shapes. You kind of need a basic understanding of the shapes of patterns, otherwise even bringing in a template can be a little confusing. So today's video is a quick intro to what those look like, so it'll be a little easier to manipulate them when you're using the 3D fashion software. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikkel Drew Pelham and I am a digital fashion specialist teaching digital fashion design through my company, 383 Design Studio, and several universities including the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City. I want to get right into the video today and I want to start with a bodice pattern because I think that's one of the ones that look the craziest if you're not familiar with what a pattern looks like. Okay, so here is a basic front and back bodice. Not really what you'd expect, right? Starting from the top is the neck drop, the shoulder, armhole, side seam, and bottom hem. And those parts that look like pizza slices, those are darts. Darts are very common in woven garments because they allow you to make things more fitted. Woven fabric doesn't stretch unless it's combined with spandex. And so on its own, if you were trying to create a really fitted garment, like a fitted dress or even a tailored shirt or a jacket, you need darts. You ever drape fabric on a mannequin or even on yourself and you kind of pinch out the excess to make it fit more snugly? That's basically what the dart is. Now every body and every design is different so the length and width or what we call the dart uptake will be different for everyone in every design. So it's totally fine if yours looks a little different than this picture. And then the difference between the front and back bodice is the neck drop. If you notice the neckline isn't as low, there's no side dart and the armhole isn't as curvy. The sleeve is also a bit of an unexpected shape, at least the top of it is. The space between the widest part of the sleeve and the top of the sleeve is called the cap height. And that varies depending on the fit of the sleeve. It tends to be flatter in a more relaxed silhouette like a t-shirt and rounder like this one in a more fitted or tailored silhouette. Something that's super important is making sure you match the front seam line to the front armhole and the back seam line to the back armhole. If the sleeve is sewn backwards on the garment, the wearer will feel it and it'll probably hang funny. This was something that got some of my students in one of the exercises I had in the Clothe 3D class. But one of the ways you can ensure that you have this matching upright is to look for notches. Notches are small markings on the pattern that you can use to help match pattern pieces correctly. On sleeves, the front seam line has one notch and the back has two. So if you look for those, you'll be sure to match them up correctly. A knit bodice pretty much looks the same except there are no darts. Knit fabrics have natural give, so unless you're doing it for aesthetic purposes, you don't need darts. The skirt pattern is pretty simple and like a bodice pattern, it has darts to accommodate for any shaping. There's also a little curve built into the side seam to accommodate for the curve of a woman's hip. The curve usually starts at the fullest part of the hip, which is the hip line, and extends a little higher than the center front and center back lines. And from the hip to the bottom hem, it's just a square. And of course, if you want to add more volume, you can increase the width of the bottom opening and then blend the side seam, or you can create a circle skirt, or you can add pleats or ruffles. You have a lot of options. And for a knit skirt, the shape is pretty much the same, minus the darts. Last is the pants pattern. So the woven pant has darts, again, for shaping. Those sort of hook shapes are for the crotch, or you might also hear it called the rise. And the length is measured from the top edge or seam of the pant, wherever you want the pant to sit, to the seam where the crotch meets the legs of the pants. The curvy line from the bottom of the rise to the bottom hem is the inseam, and the opposite line is the outseam. The other thing you should know is that most patterns will only have one front and one back. So many times you'll have to cut two opposite pieces 
or in the world of 3D, you create a symmetric pattern. Or one side is created and then is cut on the fold line, or again in the world of 3D, symmetrically unfolded. The good thing is if you're using a template from Browseware or the Clothe 3D program or whichever other 3D program you might be using, it'll already be draped on the avatar so you can see what's what and how the shapes attach to each other or wrap around the body. Where it becomes a little more challenging is when you bring in your own patterns, which you can see a demo of that in this video, or if you're creating a pattern from scratch. But whether you're using a template or your own pattern, it's just helpful in general to at least know what these shapes look like so you can navigate and create more easily in the 3D fashion design program. Thanks for watching today's video. If you wanna start using digital fashion design software, check out the links in the description to learn more about my classes. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time.